Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Shark here, got an awesome 1v1 for you today on the map Twin Beaches. This one features two players that I've covered before who end up in a matchup against each other, and I thought it was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, playing as the Axis, we got Reekly from Lithuania, ranked number 4 overall with the Wehrmacht, playing with the Breakthrough Battle Group. And then coming from South Korea, playing as the Allies, we have Jeff G. He's ranked number 20 overall with the Americans, and he's using the Armored Battle Group here. Casting this one with me is my buddy and 2v2 teammate Gray Fox. This match features a combination of really creative and aggressive play on the US part and some absolutely textbook Wehrmacht execution. So if you're looking to learn, this is a great match for you to watch. Anyway, this was exciting and fun for us. I hope you all enjoy it. And with that, we'll roll onto the video. All right. So here we go. We got Jeff G playing as the Americans. He's starting on the west side of the map. He's got a scout out already, building a barracks. He's going for engineers, uh, which is typically, you know, it's pretty typical, right? And then you've got Reekly, who's got his pioneers cap in the fuel here, uh, and he's getting a Kettenkrod out, and he's actually already building his tier one and some grenadiers. So um, he hasn't locked in a, in a battle group yet, so no obvious breakthrough. And then for Jeff G, getting a Jeep, but again, hasn't locked in armored, so uh, no... Right? I think these guys are being a little bit, um, they're going to be a little bit deliberate with their battle group choices. We talked about in the intro, both these guys really, really good. I think Jeff G is ranked number 20, Reekly is ranked number 4. Um, My guess is they're going to play a little cat and mouse and uh, <laughs> see what they're doing before they commit to anything. Yeah, I, I think I think you're right here. Uh, so for those of you who have heard Gray Fox and mainly uh, Turtle Wars videos, he loves, he thought uh, the Grenadiers, when they're asking for a Kettenkrod, we're talking about a cat and mouse for some reason. So uh, if you hear him repeat that line over and over again, that's where that's coming from. Grenadiers, their rifle's doing a decent job initially penetrating the front armor of the Jeep. There's a lot of RNG here because the penetration on those small arms is only one. Uh, and so any positive armor on the part of the Jeep will basically turn that into a probability game. Now the Jeep is going to look for the Kettenkrod, and the Kettenkrod does not have a defense, uh, as Ares discovered the other day. Um, Jeep backing up to the engineers for some repairs. Now rifles coming out for Jeff B, a second Grenadier squad out for Reekly. So it looks like we're going to see some pretty infantry heavy play early. I don't know, Fox, what do you, what do you think of this? I feel like the Grens are strong when you give them that uh, breakthrough battle group upgrade. I don't know if it's worth the investment if you don't. He doesn't have an MG out. Um, but I think he's probably just going for the capping power and trying to spread the map right now and maybe see how it turns out from there. Yeah, I, I think after the most recent patch, the Grens do scale pretty well against rifles, especially at range. I think you're exactly right, though. Interesting that he's just now going for the MG42. You know, early game that gives you ability to control the U.S. rifles, which spread across the map relatively really quickly. Second he's rifle. Go ahead. Jeep in his face too. Yeah, he's gonna force him off. Yeah. So you know, point blank penetration stays the same, but the burst length and the damage from the jeep increases quite a bit. So that's smart to use the jeep to really get up on him, right? Negating the value of the cover here. Wow, look at that RNG against the jeep. Oh, oh, but he's using the repair ability. That's pretty clever. I'll give him credit for that. Well, Regally already, though, at 50 fuel, he's got enough to get his Panzer Grenadier headquarters out. So we'll see what... Oh, he goes for healing first. The so rifles avoid getting suppressed. Jeep takes some damage. Uh, but the Grenadiers are forced to retreat, and they'll just keep uh, playing the little cat and mouse game with this MG42. <laughs> there you go. I said it. That's right. You love it. You love little cat and mouse. <laughs> Engineers capping up the fuel on the opposite side of the map. The infantry can't get around the MG fast enough. Yeah. Pioneers moving up on the scouts. They drop a model early. And then they're forced to retreat. Ooh. Looks like a mine. Yep. Mine got the Jeep. So good pick up there. Ereekly. Wow. His <laughs> getting caught already vet three between the support veteran C and the mine kill of the Jeep. Uh, that's going to be really helpful with the extra cap rate, the extra vision. Uh, that vision makes a big deal, especially once you start 
you know, worrying about vehicles and getting AT guns up and just having that line of sight to be able to keep people at bay. Well, yeah, and the Wehrmacht team weapons are so good, right? So if you have that crowd to spot for them and it's camouflage, uh, you can do a lot of work. Uh, so we've got Jeff G going for the infantry support center and Regley going for the Luftwaffe company. So expect to see some Jaegers and maybe a Warblewind or two here. Engineer's going to stay in cover here to deal with the Grenadiers. Ooh, good use of the mine. All right, so Reekly locks in breakthrough. Gets the assault grenadier upgrade. The suppression from the mine allowing the engineers to get a couple of model kills here. Now remember, two models of the Grenadier are always going to have MP40s, and so they're going to eventually out DPS engineers here. That turns quickly there. I think it's going to be kind of a wash here on this. Yeah. Yeah. So that mine really helping Jeff G win that engagement. But Reekly doing a good job taking up at least the resource heavy side of the map here. So he'll have a lot of munitions to get, uh, you know, more MP40s up on his Grenadiers and then really a lot of mines out with the two plus 16 munitions points. Yeah, that's what I was wondering if he's just going to start being a real pest with that cat and crud laying mines down everywhere. Yeah, 2-2-1 two, two, out yeah. now for Reekly. And this is also a really good, uh, this is a good unit because it, it's got that Panzerbuchse upgrade for it that allows it to deal with the American light vehicles. But Jeff G really leaning into the infantry approach here. He's going for Brownings and grenades right now rather than go for light vehicles. It's an interesting play against Wehrmacht. I, I think it's relatively easy to counter if you see a lot of MG42s. But it will scale well against these grenadiers, that's for sure. Scouts coming up to flank MG42. I don't know why the MG42 is not firing on the rifles here. That's kind of weird. MG42 retreats. I wonder if there's a line of sight block from that pillar there. There's some like real weird line of sight blocks on some of these maps. Yeah, it, that's the only thing I can think of because they were definitely within the arc and the range. All right, so Gren's, or, yeah, the Gren's with MP40 is going to push off the scouts. The rifles will be able to do a little damage, but honestly, I think the Gren's win this engagement. Reekly yeah. thinks about building a third Gren squad and then actually cancels it in favor of a sniper. I think if he sees the investment into the BARs, and so he probably thinks like, okay, no light vehicles, the sniper's a good counter. And I, I don't disagree with him here. Let's play the manpower bleed game against him. Which is smart. Something you gotta do against the Americans to kind of hold them at bay. Otherwise they'll just overwhelm you. Well, BARs have better penetration than the small arms, but still not doing a ton of damage to this 2 2 1. The sniper hits the field, MG 42 moving up in support. And then Kettenkrod and Pioneers capping up the south side of the map. So Reef is going to have a good resource advantage going forward here. Yeah, Captain Wisely retreats. Rifles squaring off against the uh, Grenadiers, but that's that's not going to do it. Well, they need to actually think about retreating oh, here. Oh, that turned quick. Yep. Those MP40s do a ton of damage up close. I actually got to look that up. I'm not sure what the damage value is, but it 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 hurts. Sniper in a good position in the middle. And uh, like our buddy Spades was talking about the other night, if you use the support weapons to kind of create a safe area in the center of the map and move the sniper around, the sniper can be really efficient and really effective at bleeding manpower. First squad of Jaegers on the way out. Meanwhile, Jeff G really diving into the rifle series. He's got his fourth rifle squad out. Yeah, and I forget about this sometimes. The Grens can build their own field defenses. So uh, this is really helpful. You don't necessarily need to have pioneers spread out all across the map. A little slower, but in a time like this where there's a lull, you might as well take advantage of it. Yeah. And actually, it looks like... I like this from Jeff G. And he ends up canceling. He's thinking about basically building a mortar pit. Riflemen eat a mine on the south side of the map here, trying to recap their fuel. This is a really high resource map, which leads to some pretty dynamic play. It makes it a lot more fun, I think. He's got the rapid vehicle production up, and he's floating some fuel, but still not trying to push any more light vehicles out. 
Yeah, so I wonder if we'll see a worm wound first. I think it makes sense given how infantry heavy Jeff G has been. Engineers that the up the engineers with the recent patch did a really good job scaling against these grenadiers. Two two one plus the sniper in the middle. Coming across. And this rifle squad is actually in a dangerous position with only three models. Scouts immediately retreat. And and there you go. You see the rifles retreat immediately. So this is interesting. In Code 2, retreating units had basically an accuracy bonus. A received accuracy bonus. In Code 3, it's a received damage bonus. And so I think the sniper probably could have uh, had a chance to drop another model there. But I'm not, I'm not sure. Jaeger's immediately upgraded with Shrek, so now Panzer Company yeah, coming out for a Jaeger refit. Rush, that MG is not going to suppress in time. Oh, yeah. Uh, Grenade coming in. Yeah, these two rifle squads, more than a match for these Grens, especially with the extra damage they get at range. And he even posed a, a hazard to this 2 2 1. Now, look at that. He uses the sprint to back away from the Gren squad and the sniper, which I, I really like that. Sprint can work both directions. The sniper's going to move over here to try to help Grens manage this engagement with the rifles. Yeah, and now the rifle squad here really outnumbered. Grens trying to advance. The sniper will be able to help them drop models from the rear. Oh, yeah. Like, Grens squad takes a lot of damage. And honestly, Jeff G without his light vehicles really doesn't have the optionality to get after the sniper that he needs. He's actually locked in armored. Uh, he's got the EZ-8 production unlocked and uh, is going for the tank depot now, but <laughs> a fifth rifle squad. So I think we're going to see basically riflemen into EZ-8s. I think that's a big difference that uh, you got to think about in a 1v1 map where you just really want that manpower spread and the capping power versus the you know the heavy hitters they get with the vehicles yeah if you can manage you know five rifle squads you can really overwhelm the enemy right especially when they get these upgrades you start getting the isc upgrades with the survivability and the logistics and your ability to just spread out your enemy and keep pressure on uh like you said in 1v1s is really really valuable you're not channeled into smaller engagements like you are in Larger team games. Back to full strength. So Reekly finally losing some VPs here now that Jeff G has two of the two of the victory points. He'd been at 500 for the entire game so far. The really impressive map control, and you'd expect that with the vet three Ketten Prod. Oh, is that a Brum Bear? Yeah, it is. So instead of a Warble Wind, we see a Brum Bear out for Reekly, which is an even better counter for infantry. Absolutely. Jeff G's gonna really need to get some AT guns out or something to counter that. Mm -hmm. The sniper's far enough back, doesn't worry about taking any damage from the rifles. This pioneer squad is at risk, but it'll retreat in time. Runs force back. Oh, this rifle squad at risk here. Scout might not make it out of this. He's gonna get bum rushed by those infantry. The sniper's retreating. Oh, good use of the sprint. Did he get the sticky bomb off? They sure do. And there goes the scout car. Boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, Rum Bear arrives. I'll put a heart on these infantry. Oh, oh my god. There it is. Even though they only drop one model, look at the health damage. It's a good thing they have healing back in spawn. I cap better. Yeah, if he knows what's good for him. He's got to be thinking about hard AT counters right now. Yeah, he's got some more command points, so he's still a long ways away from the war machine, but that's where I apply them. Uh, he, he's got a Hellcat coming instead of the, the EZ-8. So I think he's still his plan is still to rely very heavily on the rifles to manage his anti-infantry. Oh my gosh. That Brumbear just hit so hard. And now, reekly has got a really nice army composition here. So you see the MG, the Brumbear, the Sniper, the Grens, 
And then it's Kettenkrod to counter cap on the opposite side of the map. And that's forcing Jeff G to really put some like dedicated rifle power into just pushing that Kettenkrod off. I don't know. I think, you know, the one weakness of the Brum Bear is it's not super fast. So he canceled you, that Hellcat. He, he must be going for the Easy 8. Interesting. So he, but he's about a, a little under a minute away from the fuel for that. It's 110 fuel. He's got plenty of manpower. Yeah, Rinkley's still a ton of manpower. I wonder if he's saving up for a tiger. <laughs> um, yeah, he's got. He's, he's two command points away. I think, yeah. So he's got a little bit of a break, but, you know, in four minutes he'll have the fuel for it. Or if he really wants to press his advantage, a P4 or a, a second Brum Bear, he could base dive with a second Brum Bear and end this game right here. Interesting, so I like that. The use of the sprint to get the rifle squad into a position where the retreat is a little bit safer. Yeah, that's smart. There's nothing worse than telling your units to retreat and they just run right through the enemy units. <laughs> They're like, please shoot us on the way home. That's a... Uh, I think that's got to be something that comes with time, understanding the route, like retreat path route that your units are going to take based on where they are on the map. Because uh, with the ability to vault over walls, the retreat paths are not as predictable as they were in Company of Heroes 2. Oh, rifles, they could flank this MG. The MG's going to retreat. Ooh. Eat that Brumbell round, though. Yeah, they get a sticky bomb off, but it's not going to do a whole lot. I guess that brown bear. The sniper's in a great spot, supported by Jaegers and the brown bear. Another sticky. But man, if you can't get two stickies off at the same time, I don't really think it's worth it in that situation. All right, there we go. There's the easy eight. Oh, he un unlocked War Machine, which cut down the manpower cost. Rifles. Oh, you're that sniper. Yeah, they are. Oh my gosh, they're the fastest. Best Pro alive. sprinters, yeah, holy cow. Sniper almost down. There it goes. Good good pickup. Yeah, P4 out for Reekly, so that, that makes sense. That's a lot of pressure. That P4 might make up for the wife this rifle squad. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know if that's the right trade. I mean, the sniper... I know a lot of people that happily trade a rifle squad for a sniper. Look at these Shreks coming in. Like this easy A too. And yeah, that's dangerous. Captain using mark target on the P4. Yeah, the easy eight on prioritized vehicles is gonna have to be really careful with these Shreks here. And here comes the rifle platoon. Captain oh, Captain gets annihilated by the Jaegers. And then you get set up, this entry blob is done. Yeah, and actually the easy eight had to be careful this Gren squad over here on the flank as well. You don't want to get snared and allow the Jaegers to catch up to you. Oh, the P4 and the Brumbear. Oh, that's that's not the move there. That doesn't seem like the right play. Well, it will. He got the engine crit on the Brumbear, but he doesn't have anything to follow it up with. No. Back it right out and heal it. Rifles push the Grens off on the fuel. Another rifle spot out for Jeff G. He's definitely feeling the VP pressure now. You can tell he's, I feel like he's getting a little bit more, I don't want to say frantic, uh, but more aggressive with his moves. How did they move so fast? <laughs> Man, they, they did look, I have never seen rifles sprint that fast. That, that was wild. But I like, I don't know how you would even write a chat to change or a cheat. To change the movement speed of your infantry. <laughs> right. Like, I understand the map hack, right? Because all you're doing, the position of all the enemy's units are already on your computer. The game just has, like, the fog of war overlay. So the map hack stuff, all the information is already in your system memory. But, like, modifying the speed of a unit and getting the server and the other player's computer to agree doesn't seem like something that would be all that easy. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I have said less nerdy things in the past, that's for sure. Uh, well, we'll forgive you. Yeah. 
Looks like another easy eight's coming out. Uh, the the Shrek it appears to like bounce off the armor of the easy eight. Yeah, I like a lot of units in this game. I feel like easy eights are best in pairs. Just the volume of fire becomes really difficult for single units to deal with, whether it's a Brum Bear or Jaeger, you know, Jaeger Shrek team. Right. That classic two is one, one is none. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And the other thing is, uh, Shermans have a unit model damage cap, uh, which I think is they can do it most damage to three models per shot. Obviously, that doesn't affect when you have two easy aids, but when you have one, even if the unit's clumped up, you're just not going to do that much damage with a single tank. So, push those infantry off. I wonder if he's going to be able to pinch him here. I, I really wish the easy eights had come down the center of the map rather than over on the side here. I think they're gonna push this Brumbear back though. They are, but the Shreks are gonna do a decent job of whittling, you know. Yeah, it is a fair amount of damage. And they're in heavy cover, so they're gonna be able to eat a couple of rounds from the easy eight. Rifle squad here, oh. Fortunately, only a pioneer on his retreat path, so this rifle squad should be okay. Quickly, fuel wise, is a minute away from a tiger. I wonder if he'll get it out if he gets the extra command point. I, that's got to be where he's going with it. And Jeff G, meanwhile, is yeah another two and a half minutes away from a third easy eight. And he really to to win this game, he's got to keep those easy eights alive so he can mass them and use their speed uh, to really push away some of the heavier Axis armor. Rickley's also floating a boatload of munitions, and yep, the Pio's already putting a mine in. I mean, he could really just be a pest and keep those easy eights of ages, but the mines everywhere. Oh, those assault grenades do a ton of damage to the rifle squad. Yeah, mines everywhere, which is what, what it should be. Yeah, even he's got the crowd over here also laying mines. Yep, look at that. Yep, the crowd. Man, that's annoying. It's smart play, though. And Absolutely. Je Jeff G backpacking for the motor pool, so he knows he needs an AT gun or two. I think he knows that that um, tiger's coming. Yeah, and so no, he hasn't up. He doesn't have any of his ISC upgrades. Oh man, the crowd! This <laughs> Kenton crowd's gonna escape two oh, easy aids. Crap, the crowd alive. The target size is really small, right? So at range, oh, the shots yeah, are there's... unlikely to hit. There's nothing more tilting when that crowd just dodges or bounces rounds. Yeah. All right, so a little bit of a push in the center for the Axis. They end up on the Easy 8's flank, but P4 looking at the infantry and eats a couple of rounds almost immediately. There is a mine down here, but the P4 is going to back up, so it's not going to hit it. And there's actually a risk if he sits on that mine and a Shrek comes in and the mine going off. Jaegers eat a couple of uh, easy eight shots. Oh wow. That infantry squad just has a sliver of health left. Yeah. And Drens take a bunch of damage as well. And there it is. There's the tiger. Oh, that was quick. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that rapid production. Yeah. Three rifle squads force off the Grens. But a well-placed MG42 in the lighthouse. Uh, I actually kind of like this. This is, it's in a good spot and it gets a height advantage. Now the easy eights are here. They'll probably be able to do something about it. Yeah, he's bringing that MG right out of there. Yeah, and so the MG bounces away. They go from the third floor to the first floor in 0.2 seconds flat. Okay, this is really unusual. You got... Jeff G, not building an AT gun or another easy eight, but building a Chaffee. And uh, I, I have to admit, I'm a little confused by that. Yeah, I wonder what the thought process is there. That's not going to hold up against any of the armor units that are out right now. Yeah, it, it's not going to reliably penetrate the Brumbear or the Tiger. And even the P4 from the front is a little questionable. Most Jaegers and Shrek's going to make short work of it. Yeah, Tiger armor bounces a couple of Easy Eight shots, and the Easy Eights back up. Grenz and Jaegers force off the scouts. So Jeff G's got uh, VPs 
at least uh you know two to one cap right now but that's going to change relatively soon the ketting crowd is going to cap this up it's on the back foot tactically right now i feel like yeah and i think you know reekly's doing a good job playing in the middle right like his uh his armor it's it's slower and heavier but it's more durable so i think building kind of a base of support in the center using his crowd and his uh grenadiers to cap on the flanks Makes a lot of sense, and it's going to make for a position that's really hard for Jeff Tree to push through. They've captured a victory point. And here we go, AT gun coming out for Jeff T. Which again, actually won't do a whole lot to either the Tiger or the Brum Bear. Maybe if he can get some shots in on the flank. Rifles and Grens squaring off on the south side of the map here. And this oh, is where you miss the port on him. We walked right into that. Yeah, right into that mine. Oh. Oh, he almost gets that one easy aid. Yeah, and the engineers. Actually, the easy yeah. aid needs to back up. There we go. Couple of rounds penetrate the tiger, so uh, both sides going to back up and put their wounds. Assault Grens knock out the riflemen here on the fuel point. Drives are pushing for that VP hard. Mm -hmm. Territory point is no longer under our control. More Jaegers coming out now for Reekly. They're a good counter to the EZ8, because the EZ8 will need a couple of shots to knock out the Jaegers, and as the Jaegers get veteran C, uh, they they basically develop a lot of resistance to the EZ8. A, a second Chaffee out now. Oh my word. Got that it, yeah. one shot from that Tiger. <laughs> good lord. It hits so hard. I think the only thing I like more than the Tigers 88 in this game is the Archer. Just like the sound of the, you know, the report of the shot and then oh, yeah. the sound of the impact. It tells you exactly what it is. Yeah, if I'm Jeff G, I think you need a couple of things here. You need another engineer squad with minesweepers out because mines are everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, Reekly, you when you pointed out, he had 300 munitions. Now he's got five. So he's yeah. clearly planting mines all over the place. He's just mining up like crazy. And if you're planning... I'll be Bosnia Herzegovina over here. <laughs> nice reference. I think if your plan is to use these chaffies to do like a seek and destroy style dive, the mines are the perfect counter for it. So you need to start sweeping them and at least discourage Reekly from continuing to lay them. Oh, third chaffie. Okay, that, that's got to be his plan. Is to look for really a deep flank. It's an interesting strategy, and it's not one that I've seen before, so I appreciate it. But I am concerned about its viability. I'm impressed with these V8s. Their front armor, they really do chew up a lot of rounds. It takes a while to penetrate through that. Yeah. Yeah, the penetration mechanic, there's still a fair amount of RNG, right? As you watch the tiger shrug off a shot. Um, and one thing that's kind of hard to tell is the penetration at various ranges. It's it's very different for each gun, and even, you know, like, the 76 mil on the EZ-8 is the same as the 76 mil on, uh, you know, the Sherman, uh, the M4A1 76. But it has a different damage and penetration profile, and it, so it, can't, it might not always be intuitive. Oh, here we go. Here are the Chaffees. Dive in the Tiger. They gotta get behind it. Easy 8s push as well, but they hit a mine. Ooh, mine. multiple mines. One goes down to the Shreks. And they didn't really threaten that Tiger, though. Let's see how many shots are you going to bound. But, yeah, as long as... Oh, they no, knock it out. enough. There you go. I know, but those Jaegers were right there. Yeah. Let's and see how the trade works out. So, two Chaffees and two Easy 8s down. Holy smokes. Look at those Chaffees go. They are so fast. I don't know the two easy aids versus one tiger is the right trade. Look, he's gonna lose. Yeah, he might not lose. Yeah, he lost the other chaffy there. Yeah. So this I feel like Freakley came out ahead on that. Oh, for sure. And he's, you know, two minutes away from another tiger. Basically, as soon as the cooldown <laughs> is complete, he's yeah. still got his Brum Bear and his P4, and he's got a pretty solid VP advantage. Really uh, a good game by Jeff G, though. I mean, he, he laid his cards down on the table and. You know, made it happen. And, yeah, you can't really argue with the timing either. But also, Jeff G taking a lot of infantry losses. He lost two rifle squads. 
make that three. And so this might be it here. I uh, I don't know if he's got a, a route back into this game. Not enough fuel. Another AT gun coming out, but he doesn't have the infantry or the suppression to push off. Right. They lost the capping power. That Veramoct infantry with the veterancy that it has is absolutely ridiculous. That yeah. Rumbear is still going to handle those infantry squads. Yeah, they're just going to bleed models. Oh, and the Brumbear bounces the AT gun shot as well. Oh, and there's the GG. All right, everyone. So pretty explosive ending there. Uh, kind of what you'd expect when you see players of this caliber. So as always, we're going to go through the build order review here, and then we'll get into the post-match discussion. Starting with Jeff G, playing as a U.S. Armor Battle Group. All right, he starts with his scout and his engineer, builds a barracks, goes with the jeep early, which he uses relatively effectively until it gets knocked out. Then gets three rifle squads and route to a total of five overall on the field. Uh, he techs a med station early, which is really critical in helping the rifles survive those early engagements with the grenadiers. Goes infantry support center, although he does not get any of the ISC upgrades. So he uses some of the captain abilities pretty well uh, in the game, which we'll talk about, but none of the ISC upgrades, which I think is a result of him being kind of fuel starved. Then he techs BARs and grenades. Uh, this is where I think the munitions surplus ability from the ISC would be really helpful. He spent a lot of munitions on BARs for five rifle squads uh, and a fair amount of munitions on grenades. So that munitions surplus is, is really nice at cutting that down and making sure you can plant mines and do other things. Um, gets his, his fourth rifle squad out. At this point, he chooses the armored battle group, builds a tank depot, and locks in the EZ-8 production. Uh, which is obviously a little bit cheaper once you get the war machine upgrade. Uh, he gets his fifth rifle squad, and then he gets his first easy eight. He thought about the Hellcat, uh, but I think uh, I agree with this choice here. He cancels it, gets the easy eight out. He replaces a rifle squad that he loses. He gets a second easy eight, and this is where he gets kind of creative and and a little bit different. So he back decks to a motor pool, but instead of getting a couple of AT guns out and continuing with the easy eight train, he actually gets three chaffies. And then he uses the chaffies for that late game push, which almost worked, not quite, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit. All right. And then for Reekly, playing Vermont with the Breakthrough Battle Group. And it, it looked like he wanted to maintain some flexibility. A lot of times you see guys, they spawn in the map and Breakthrough is the first thing that they click, but he waits a little bit to select it. So here he starts with his Pioneers. He gets a Ketten Crowd out, which he immediately gets to Vet 3, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and that, that helps him for pretty much the remainder of the game. Then he gets his infantry company, two Grenadier squads, MG42. He texts the med station, and then he selects a breakthrough battle group, and this is when you start to see some of the MP40 upgrades come out. Then he builds his Luftwaffe company, gets a 221 scout car, which he uses relatively well to kind of fend off the rifles. And the nice thing about that, he never really needed the Panzer Buxa upgrade uh, because Jeff G didn't go for you know the light vehicles, but that would have been really useful, so he was prepared uh, for that that kind of mid-game push by the Americans. Then he gets a sniper, which he uses relatively well. Uh, he, he does what, you know, makes a lot of sense. He supports it in the middle with the scout car and uh, the support weapons and the grenadiers. Um, and he's doing a pretty good job bleeding manpower until Jeff G's able to run it down, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, then he gets the Jaeger squad out, equips him with Shrex, builds his Panzer company, his tier four. He gets a Brumbear, which is a great choice. Follows it up with a P4, gets a second squad of Jaegers out, which proves pretty decisive later in the game. Gets another squad of Pioneers. And then the last thing that he builds is a Tiger. And at that point, uh, it's just about managing his units, uh, which he does an absolutely great job of um, and is able to close out the game after Jeff G uh, pushes on him in that, that final kind of climactic engagement. So with that, uh, I'll bring Gray Fox back in and we'll get into the post-match discussion here. That was a pretty exciting game. Uh, and honestly, like textbook Vermont play from Reekly. So uh, now that we've been over the build order, uh, we'll talk a little bit about, uh, you know, just do the, the post-match review here. Starting really with Jeff G, right? Who played an awesome game, uh, but ended up losing this one. So uh, Fox, you know, what are, what are some things that he could have done differently to maybe pull this one out? So, you know, I... I like where he's thinking in a 1v1 match, right? Map control is key, right? You've got to be in two places at once constantly. Mm -hmm. um, and so he tried to build a lot of infantry and just kind of spread the map out. But uh, I think the problem he ran into was 
it seemed like he was playing the stall and just laying heavily on his his tier one and, and those infantry and he didn't build any of the stuff he needed to counter what Reekly was building when he was moving into the uh you know his tier four where you're starting to get that brown bear out and then you know he, you know there's the threat of getting a p4 out and he knows he's breakthrough right so mm-hmm. um i feel like as the game goes on and he has fuel control you've got to be worried about that tiger coming out um jeff g was just a little slow with getting out the things you need to keep that that Wehrmacht armor at bay mm-hmm. um and it just kind of ended up rolling him up in the end game yeah I, and i think there were some indicators that he was either skipping the motor pull tech or delaying it considerably right so when you see grenades and bars out early as well as the healing uh weekly probably assessed right there like okay i don't have to worry about greyhounds i don't have to worry about chaffees uh because he's throwing all of his fuel and his investment into the infantry uh, which is a strategy, right? And it allowed the riflemen to scale pretty well against those uh, the grenadiers, even with the MP40s. But like you pointed out, what it didn't allow you to do is deal with kind of the heavier armor that's available to the Wehrmacht. Um, and, you know, and and had Reekly gone for a whirlwind, it would have really caught him on the back foot. Had he gone for a second Brumbear, he could have done a base inspection and really just kind of ended the game, you know, probably about 10 minutes sooner. So, yeah, I, I think that's a good point. Uh, one thing that came up, and uh and so we had to consult with an expert on this one one thing when jeff g ran down the Wehrmacht sniper we talked about it a little bit and even reekly commented in the chat like how did they move so fast so the rifleman sprint ability stacked with the captain's flanking maneuver ability created usain bolt level american sprinting rifleman uh so keep that one in your toolkit guys if your your captain's at vet one Flank maneuver, rifle sprint, you can it cancels suppression and allows you just run right past uh pretty much anything on the map. And that sniper was done for. So uh yeah, good catch. Uh another shout out to Spades, our resident company of heroes expert, uh, for picking up that one. Um, what did you think of the four chaffee late game surprise attack? So, you know, I think that that was one, when you say surprise, right, I was surprised that you would basically back tech, essentially, um, to something that you know is going to be outmatched at that point in the game. Um, but, you know, he, he made this little attack pack of them, plus his easy eights, to where he killed the tiger with it. Um, a strategy that I wouldn't have even considered as a viable option, because those chappies sure. are pretty squishy against... You know, that late game Wehrmacht armor. Mm-hmm. Um, but it did work tactically. Um, you know, he killed the tiger with it. But I think it was just a little bit too little, too late. Mm-hmm. Versus, you know, if you don't skip the motor pull earlier in the game, you have the AT guns out. You have yep. things to keep Wehrmacht armor at bay. Keep a little distance. Keep that uh, Brumbear from just pushing up on you and oppressing your infantry like it did. You know, it, it's one of those things where I think you've always got to consider what's the trade-off in this game, right? Am I going to assume some risk um, and hold off on some tech until I can, you know, pull a, a bigger card out later in the game versus being a little bit more, like, doctrinal, if you will, in terms of, you know, what do I need to be thinking about that's going to be the hard counter for the next step in their tech? Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it was just kind of a game that didn't play out for Jeff G in this game. Yeah, you, you got to love the aggression, right? Like, I I love to see people just go for it. The Chaffee move, right? Kind of keeping the Chaffees in the rear until he had his little pack of them using the Seek and Destroy. Like, I love the idea. And I think without the Jaeger Shrek teams there, it probably works and the trade comes out in his favor. Uh, This is one of those situations where I think being a little bit more, not necessarily of a passive player, but a patient player, like someone like Farragee, uh or aries if you watched his latest game on uh on sarge's channel right like understanding that he's got to keep his vehicles alive because he's at kind of a, a combat power deficit uh and and going for like a third easy a back teching for an at gun and playing very patiently and trying to have like cleaner trades you know maybe that has a better chance of working out in the long run but it certainly wasn't anywhere near as exciting as chaffee's running across the map uh that said Reekly, hundreds of munitions worth of mines everywhere <laughs> and so that strategy was just doomed from the start that um, that, that three ketten got ketten cred like what two minutes into the match yeah. uh 
that thing was probably the MVP of the match. Well, and if it could have, if it could have like kept accumulating experience based on the mines, it probably would have been like vet seventeen by the end. Oh my god! So Absolutely. many mine strikes. Absolutely. Um, so that's uh, that brings us to kind of our last point with Jeff G. I I think when you start seeing those mines, he had the one squad of engineers. You know, it's not that much of a manpower cost. A second squad of engineers with minesweepers. Um, you know, 45 munis for a minesweeper, 30 munis for a mine, but it's really about what it does to your ability to flank and, and maneuver. Uh, and I think that would have gone a long way to helping Jeff G. At least, you know, I know when I'm planting a bunch of mines and then I see the other guy's got a minesweeper and he starts picking them up, I get a little bit less aggressive with him because it almost seems like a waste of munitions at that point. So he might have been able to have that impact on Reekly. No, I think that's probably one of the most interesting things about mines. They're like the they're like the sleeper cell of the match, right? So like, uh, they're not particularly expensive. You can really punish someone who ever commits. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, like you said, like you can make them be a lot more conservative with their pushes because of it. It's interesting how it can really change the pace of a game mm -hmm. just based on someone being scared about those mines being out there. Yeah, and it can really help you when you have a VP advantage and you're all you're trying to do is kind of wait the enemy out or force them to be aggressive and, and get good trades. That active mine planting goes a long way to victory. Um, other, like, I don't have many other notes for Jeff G. I really hope I don't have to play him because I feel like he'll just run me off the map in about three minutes. Really good, really aggressive play, excellent micro, good use of the sprint. Um, so yeah, Jeff G, awesome game uh, for Reekly. I don't know there's a, a better example of how to play Wehrmacht against USF in 1v1. Um, you know, I think he was aided this map. It's a really high resource. You got the two plus 16 munitions points. You got four plus 10 fuel points across the map. Uh, so I think Reekly did a great job of using the resource and the VP advantage he had, locking it in, making good tech choices, right? Combining the Brumbear with the P4 and the Tiger. Like, you're not going to get a much better army composition. Uh, I think, especially towards the end of the game. And eventually yeah. the, the Jaegers and the Grens were overwhelming. What were you saying? Yeah, uh, It's pretty solid, just like blocking and tackling on his part, I feel like. Super fun match to watch. Yeah, Re really, uh, yeah, like you said, super fun match to watch, really exciting. Um, lots of back and forth, and just lots of really good sound gameplay that I think everyone can take a lot away from. So, uh, Did you have anything else before we get out of here? I think that's it. I think I've said that there's all there is to be said. All right. Hey, well, thanks for watching this one with me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, hell yeah. All right, guys, that's all for us, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.